So this is part two from my case reports, case one. A 53-year-old female patient with Currier Huntington disease. She presents with a VA decrease since about five months. See the dropped nucleus and the total PVR detachment. So this surgery has of course two steps. One step is the removal of the dropped nucleus, uh, which is difficult because there's a huge tear, giant tear at 12 o'clock um, and the nucleus drops into this huge tear. What would you do? Well, um, of course I will try to do a emulsification with a phragmatome. Um, a complete vitrectomy is difficult here because the retina is not stable and um, you injure the retina if you want to do a vitrectomy which is a, a complete vitrectomy which is essential before you remove the nucleus. So I'm trying to place the drop nucleus onto the retina aspirating it up with the um, vitreous cutter now I'm taking a phragmatome and I'm trying to emulsify this dropped nucleus I'm inside the dropped nucleus now it's a hard nucleus but not very hard And now comes the problem that there is vitreous left um, disturbing the further removal of this dropped nucleus. So here is, nu here is a vitreous which is, no which is not visualized It is vitreous on the height of the retina. So I'm trying to remove some of the vitreous with the vitreous cutter. Um, but the situation is now comes the vitreous cutter. I'm trying again so with the phragmatome. There's more vitreous. and the retina is detached so which is difficult to remove what would you do in the situation I'm removing some more vitreous with the vitreous cutter now so yes I decide to convert my technique and do a 6 this is a sterile incision which is 8 millimeter big the next difficult part is the elevation of the nucleus I use the vitreous cutter in the aspiration mode Now it's behind um, the pupil. I cannot use um, perflocarbone because it will become subretinal. So I'm working without perflocarbone. This is the extraction loop. 
I'm trying to extract now. Um, now I lost it. It dropped again and it drops behind the giant rupture. So this is not so easy. Let's try again. I'm aspirating with the vitreous cutter. Elevating the nucleus up to the pupil. Extraction loop. And now extraction. And I'm lucky this time. The nucleus is removed. And I can start with the second part, which is um, retinal attachment surgery. I did so encircling band, vitrectomy, laser, silicon oil. In three months post op, the retina is attached under silicon oil. Also, see the encircling band. Case 2. Well, this is only I, RP 55mm mercury, platinum tear chamber, pseudophakia. Idotomy was performed, but no effect. Look at the flat interior chamber, please. What is your diagnosis? The diagnosis is a secondary closed angle glaucoma, a pupillary block glaucoma. The aqueous flow is blocked and the IL is pressed against the pupil and flat into your chamber. The IL is centrated but anterior subluxated due to cellular lysis, blocks the pupil. Typically, a capture tension ring is present. What would you do? Vitrectomy, remove the IOL, iridectomy. I decided to do a iridectomy and anterior vitrectomy. Of course, it's an angle glaucoma. One week later, same IOP, flat anterior chamber, but we have a big iridectomy. Well, what would you do? What happened? The eudectomy is big, but not continuous. Why? Because the capsule tension ring inflates the lens capsule, and the lens capsule is behind the eudectomy opening. So this is not patent. So I decided to do a lens capsulotomy, simply to open lens capsule behind the ir iris. One week later, Normal deep chamber, normal IOP, but the IOL luxated. What would you do now? Well, I extracted the IOL, implanted an artisan IOL. The patient did not come back. Thank you very much.